look at a neighbor real good, eyeball to eyeball, and say that you can be stronger, you can be stronger the second time around. The second time. Tell them again, you can be stronger, can be stronger the second time around. Time. Come on and clap your hands as you have your seat. Stronger the second time around. In my life, I've had the privilege of studying successful people and leaders, particularly in my leadership classes. And one common thing that I've learned about successful people is that oftentimes they do not succeed at their first attempt. The reality is it takes several attempts at what they're trying before they become successful. And when you look at their stories, it blows you away because when you see their success, it looks like they became successful overnight. But the reality is, is that it has been a very long process and a journey to success. Um, but let's be honest, when you try something that you believe in, something that you're passionate about and it fail, it does something to you. It makes you feel some kind of way. Especially if the reason why you did not succeed is because of something that you did wrong. What do you do when you fail and it's your fault? What do you do when you fail and all of the fingers are pointing back at you? You might try to blame this person or this place or this thing, but when it all boils down, you are the reason why it did not succeed. And when you are the reason or the fault for why you failed the first time, it's very difficult to try again. But I want you to know that not only can you start again, but you can be stronger the second time around. You don't have to allow what you have gone through in failure, especially if it's your fault to keep you there. You can start and be stronger. Look at someone and say, I can start again and I can be stronger. And as we look at our text, we see a great example of a person who uh, started out really strong but failed because of his mistakes. But God gave him a second chance. Today we see Brother Samson, who is one of the last judges in the book of Judges. Uh, we see Samson being birthed out of barrenness and in oppression. You didn't hear what I said. We see Samson being birthed in barrenness and in oppression. When Samson was birthed, uh, Israel had now been put in oppression uh, by the Philistines, which is an ancient enemy of Israel, for 40 years. Uh, they had been put in this oppression because of their disobedience to God. I want you to know, people of God, that just because you're chosen by God does not mean you get to do what you want to do. Because when God has chosen you and you continue to be disobedient, it places you in bondage. Now, I'm not talking about sin per se as much as I'm talking about following the call and the purpose of God on your life. If you are here today, you have a calling, you have a purpose, you have a reason for being here. You're not here by accident. You have a purpose. And all God wants from you is a yes, Lord, to his purpose and his plan for your life. And when you make the decision that you're not going to say yes to God's plan for your life and walk contrary, then you position yourself for your enemies to come in on you and to oppress you. Stop for a minute and go back in your past. Think about the situations where you got hemmed up in the situation. Wasn't it because you was at the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong people doing the wrong thing, not doing what God has called you to do, and then you found yourself in the okie doke Oh, come on, let's be for real up in this place today. When you don't walk in obedience to God's purpose, you find yourself in bondage. But uh, God is so interesting. The woman who God chooses to bring Samson through the Bible tells us in chapter 13 that she was barren. So God chooses a dead place to birth deliverance. Oh, this has uh, let me say that again. God chooses a dead place uh, to birth deliverance. I don't know what might be dead in your life. 
I don't know what seems like it cannot live again. I don't know what you're facing that seems like it cannot be revived. But we serve a God who specializes in bringing deliverance out of dead situations. We serve a God who can raise up anything. There is no situation. There is no circumstance. There is no challenge beyond the reach of God. I don't care how dead it might be. I don't care how long it's been dead. I don't care how it became dead. If God wants it to live, it will live again. Uh, I don't know who I'm talking to today who might be in a dead situation. I feel God. Uh, but God says he's about to touch your dead situation uh, and he's about to use your dead situation uh, to bring forth a deliverance uh, that not only is going to affect your life, uh, but it's going to touch the life of so many people. And I wish I had 300 people today uh, that open up their mouth and say, uh, God, you can touch my dead situation and bring deliverance. Uh, you can touch my dead relationship. You can touch my dead children. You can touch my dead dream and use it to birth deliverance. So God produces Samuel from a barren womb. And when he produces Samson, uh, he provides the parents with specific instructions. He said that this boy will be a Nazarite from the womb. Now, what is a Nazarite? A Nazarite is a, a, a certain type of vow or a promise that you make. Um, it's the word um, in the Hebrew is Nazir, which means to be consecrated or to be set aside. So to be consecrated or to be set aside means to be separated from the masses. Yeah. Means to be set aside for a specific purpose and function. It means you're not like everybody else. You can't do what everybody else do. You cannot go where everybody else go. You are consecrated. Now for the Nazarite vow, there were specific conditions. Uh, a Nazarite could not consume strong drink or wine. They couldn't even eat anything that came from a product of a grape. Uh, they could not touch any or eat anything that was unclean. Uh, they could not come into contact with anything that was dead, even if it was their relatives or an animal, and they could not cut their hair. These were the conditions for the Nazarite. This was their sign that they were holy unto the Lord, separate and different from everybody else. And the thing that God birthed out of barrenness to bring deliverance, God also consecrated at the womb. Did not give him a choice. Did not give him the option. Did not give him time to vacillate. He chose him before he was even born and says, I'm going to set you aside because I'm going to use you to bring deliverance. And Many of you here today can testify to the fact uh, that you've been set aside from your mother's womb. Uh, you don't know why you're different. Uh, you don't know why you never fit in. Uh, you don't know why you see things differently. Uh, but let me tell you why. Because God chose you uh, from your mama's belly. Uh, before the foundations of the earth, he chose you. Uh, that you would be different. Uh, he didn't set you aside to be different uh, so that you can be ostracized and ridiculed. Uh, he set you aside uh, because he wants to use you to bring deliverance. Uh, he he set you aside because he wants to use you to change a situation. He set you aside because he wants to use you for a great purpose. And God sent me here to speak to those who have been consecrated but frustrated. Those who have been set aside but have been stagnant. Those who have been consecrated but don't seem to be getting ahead. God says don't be discouraged today. Be not weary in well doing for you shall reap if you faint not. Uh, I know I'm preaching better than you talking. Uh, and I know I'm talking to some people who've been set aside but frustrated today. Uh, asking God, why me? Uh, why did I have to go through it? Uh, why did I have to lose this? And why did I have to fight this? Uh, God says it was to position you. Uh, to set you aside. Uh, so that my glory uh, is shown in your life. Uh, and I dare 500 people right now uh, to open up their mouth and thank God uh, for the fact that you've been set aside for the people. Hallelujah. He says, I'm going to set you aside because your success is based upon your consecration. The reason why some of you are failing is because you're not consecrating yourself. Amen. You're doing what you want to do versus doing what God has told you to do. Amen. The only success you can have is in obedience to what God is saying. And I want to be clear, I'm not talking about sin. I'm talking about hearing 
your purpose from God and we're walking boldly and fully in that purpose because we sin every day. I don't care how long you've been saved, you're going to sin. Uh, but God can deal with a sinner if you will repent. Uh, but what God says I have problems dealing with is with people, don't worry about it, is with people who refuse to move in their purpose. Uh, with people who refuse to be what I made them to be. Uh, God says I can't do nothing with those people. Uh, you can mess up all day long uh, but if you can lift your hands and say Father forgive me, God can work with you. Uh, you can been out in the street all night Lord, huh? when whoever you wanted to be with doing God knows what all the way you lift up your hands and say Father I stretch my hands to thee no matter help I know God will we forgive you but when you say I'm not going to be what you made me to be God says I have a problem and then now you position yourself to be placed in bondage it's what I call being called but defiant All right. called but defiant. Amen. What does defiant mean? It means to resist. Amen. To be unwilling to cooperate. Jesus. To make the decision that I'm not going to do what I've been asked or chosen to do. Defiant. And Samson was chosen but defiant. He knew he was chosen but he continued to do what he wanted to do. And this is the scary part, and this is what gets a lot of people in the church. <laughs> Even though Samson was defiant, God was still using him. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm going to let that mirror me. Amen. Even though Samson was defiant, God was still using him. But let me say something today. Just because God is using you to fulfill his purpose does not mean he is okay with how you are defiant. Right. Right. And a lot of times we feel that because God is using me and you're getting by on grace and you're getting by on mercy and God keeps covering you and God keeps bringing you out so you keep doing your own thing. And you excuse the fact that you're doing your own thing because God is using you. God using you is not an excuse of your disobedience. It is God showing you, I let you out, but it's not much longer before I bring you down. Oh, I know this ain't a shouting word, but it's going to change your whole life. Some people in the church think just because they can prophesy, they can lay hands, and because they can usher, and they can sing, and they can do all these things, or they have titles, or, or they've been in the church for 40 years, uh, it means that God is pleased with your life. Uh, and when, for, Now, now I, I, I keep having to say this. Uh, I'm not just talking about sin. Uh, I don't want you to get confused. I'm talking about refusing uh, to obey the full purpose and call of God on your life. What is it that God has called you to be? What is it that God has called you to do? And are you doing it? Or have you just accepted something that came along because you're afraid to really become yourself? Or, or you just took what came along because you didn't believe you had what it took to be what God called you to be? Uh, God is saying, when you act like that, uh, you are coming against the creation of me uh, that I place inside of you. Because uh, God said, when I breathe my breath into you, uh, I gave you everything you needed to become, uh, everything I ordained you to be, uh, and to walk around and to question your ability Ability, uh, to become and be what I called you to be uh, is an affront to the very nature of God in you. Uh, and it is the devil's job uh, to confuse the people of God, uh, to make the people of God feel like they don't have what it takes. Uh, and that's where sin comes in. Uh, because when you're not focusing on purpose, uh, then the devil grabs your attention uh, and brings you into things uh, to pull you away from your purpose. Uh, it's not the sin. Uh, it is to frustrate God's purpose in your life. Because the devil knows he can never stop you uh, from becoming what you're supposed to be. Uh, so then he engages in activities to frustrate you, uh, to get you twisted up, uh, to taint you, uh, to mess up your name and reputation. Uh, so that when you do go in your purpose, no one will listen to you. Uh, ah, but the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. I declare the decree in the name of Jesus uh, that your purpose is coming up out of you. Uh, like a wellspring of water. Uh, that you're waking up to your purpose. Uh, that you're walking in your destiny, uh, that you're coming into the identity of God in you, uh, and you're telling the devil, I'm not dancing with you no more, uh, I'm dancing with my destiny, uh, I'm not walking with you no more, uh, I'm walking in my purpose, uh, because life is too short to miss God's purpose on my life. And when you make the decision to be chosen and defiant, you position yourself for sabotage. All right. All right. But the 
is sabotage. Sabotage means it's a setup to destroy you. All right. And the problem with many of you all is to destroy is not outside of you. The destroy is on the inside of you. You are destroying yourself. Self sabotage. All right. Every time you get ahead, you do something to pull yourself back. Have you ever seen yourself when you find yourself with a little extra money and then you go out and you buy everything you can put your hands on and now you're struggling to pay your bills? Why are you doing that? Because the spirit of poverty has got your mind twisted up so every time you get some money, you subconsciously pull yourself back to poverty so you can never move into prosperity that God has. You know what I'm talking about? You don't need another pair of shoes. You don't need another tie. You don't need another golf club. You don't need another hat. You don't need another magazine. You just need to put that money aside so that God can bring you into your purpose and you're going to need that money for your purpose. I know you don't like me talking about money, but it's okay. Come on, clap your hands and thank God for the deliverance. So, when you are defiant, but chosen. Yeah. God using you, yeah. but still doing your own thing. Yeah. You set yourself up to be sabotaged. Well. But I want you to know today that there is safety. Right. There is security right. and consecration. Right. Are you setting yourself, yourself aside for God's purpose? Right. When you get up in the morning, are you quick to turn on the TV and see what's on the news? Or is the first thing out of your mouth is, Lord, here is my life. Use it whichever way you please. Are you quick to find out the latest gossip or are you quick to say, God, let my mouth be an instrument of blessings and inspiration and let gossip and lies and curse be far away from me. Are you quick to do everything else but what God called you to do? Or are you setting yourself aside every day to say, God, I know I'm not like everybody else. It doesn't mean I'm better than. I'm just not like everybody else. Because my calling and my purpose is different. So then what it requires to be different is different from everybody else. Your friend might pray five minutes a day, but you might be called to pray more. But because you don't want to get up and disturb your sleep, you don't pray. You might be called to serve people and to give on a different level. Your friend might be stingy and a Scrooge, uh, but you're not called to be stingy and a Scrooge. Uh, if anybody needs food, you're going to feed them. Uh, if somebody needs clothes, you're going to give you're giving the clothes off your back. Uh, and people might talk about you like you're crazy, but that's what God called you to do. And if you don't yield to that calling and consecrate yourself to that purpose, then you're setting yourself up for sabotage. Now, why is it important to submit and not be defiant? All right, all right. Because very often when God has birthed you for deliverance, he will marry you to your enemy. All right. All right. He will combine you to your enemy. Now, I'm not talking about a person. I'm talking about your purpose. Now, Samson had a love for Philistine women. Strange women. And the Philistines were the enemies of Israel. Yeah. They were the oppressors of Israel. But yet, Samson married an enemy. And his parents got upset. It was like, boy, of all of the beautiful women in Israel, why would you want one of them girls over there? I'm sure some of you mothers have had that conversation with your son. Of all these pretty girls, why you want that one over there? That fight over there. Why do you want her versus this holy woman who's in the church? But God told the parents, this is for a purpose. Uh -huh. you you got to be careful when you put your mouth on things that you think is wrong from the jump. God might be using it for a greater purpose. He said, I want him to marry the enemy so I can use him to destroy the enemy from the inside. And many of you all, God is going to take you if you're not already in enemy territory. Uh, and if you open up your eyes and look on your job, uh, if you really look at where you work and look at where you live, uh, there's enemies all around. Uh, what are the enemies? The enemies of God. Uh, the enemies of the word of God. Uh, the enemies of the truth. Uh, calling a lie the truth and the truth a lie. Uh, people lifting up things that are abominations against God and his purpose. Uh, and beginning to walk around as if it is God. Uh, and God will place you smack down in the middle. 
connected to it. Huh? And if you're not consecrated, then you will become subjected. Oh, you better give me the day. But when you stay submitted to God's purpose huh, and consecrate yourself, huh, then God will protect you. Yes, even in enemy territory. Huh? Sleeping with the enemy, huh, but you're still covered. Huh? Eating with the enemy, huh, but you're still covered. Huh? Having to walk with the enemy, huh, but they cannot touch you huh, because you're consecrated huh, and you're on an assignment to bring deliverance. Oh, this is heavy for Sunday morning. I ain't ready. But because Samson Yay. was defiant against his vow and defiant against his calling, he became tainted, which led to a life of feelings uh -huh. and desires yeah. and not consecration and direction. Uh -huh. See, when you continue to buck against God yeah. and buck against what he asked you to do, yeah. that he gives you over in your head to your own desires. Uh -huh. To the point where you think what you want and what you see is right, uh, but it's wrong. Uh. That's why I don't fight with people uh, who think that they're right when they're wrong. Uh. What is the point? Uh, God has already given them over to reprobation. Uh. You just want to make sure you ain't been given over to reprobation. Uh. You got to make sure that something you think is right is wrong. Uh. Because baby, uh, when God gives you over to reprobation, uh, it's hard to come back from reprobation. And so he began to be led by his feeling and his passion and what feels good. But the reality is when you've been called for greatness, uh, you can't go by how you feel. Uh, when you're on assignment, uh, it ain't got nothing to do with how you feel, baby. Uh, it has to do with fulfilling the task that God has given you. Because some days uh, you're not going to want to feel like doing what God called you to do. Uh, some days you're not going to want to do what God told you to do. Uh, some days you're not going to want to be what God has told you to be. Uh, but your commitment to his calling on your life, uh, your commitment to bringing deliverance, uh, what cause you to get up when you're sick as a dog, uh, what cause you to smile when you're depressed on the inside, uh, what cause you to lay hands on the sick when you're sick, uh, what cause you to give your last uh, and trust God to make a way, uh, who am I talking to in this church today, uh, you can't go by how you feel, uh, you better go by what God calls you to do, baby, why you want to set yourself up for sabotage? And just like I'm talking about up here, Samson got set up for the okie doke. The enemies begin to say, uh, we, we've been studying him. We know what makes the brother tick. He like pretty women. Uh -huh. See, it's not about the sex, uh, yeah. it's about the feeling. Yeah. Come on, come on. So I don't want you to get lost because it's, you think it's about sex. It's not about sex, it's about being led by your feelings yeah. despite what your mind is telling you. Yeah. Oh, the song, Jill Scott says, Why does my body ignore what my mind says? I'm trying to keep it intact when I'm here in this bed. What does that mean? It means that your mind is telling you not to do something, but your body has more power over your mind, and now you're in a situation that's not for you because your body has more power than your mind. Have you ever been there where your mind can say no? No, don't do it. Don't go over there. Don't call. Don't answer. Don't text back. Don't, don't. And you found yourself in it anyway. God says, if you're in that position, uh, then you'll be in defiant in an area that God has spoken to you about. And God is giving you your attention saying, you're getting out there too far now. And you get in a place where you can't even be controlled by your own mind. The Holy Ghost speaking to you and you're still bucking what the Holy Ghost is saying. And you're doing what you want to do. God says, you are in the spirit of defiance. Yes, you can say, but you're still defiant. Huh? Yes, you can preach, but you're still defiant. Huh? Yes, you usher, but you're still defiant. Huh? Yes, you're a deacon, but you're still defiant. Huh? Yes, you're a mother, but you're still defiant. Huh? You're a trustee, huh? but still defiant. Huh? And God is trying to get your attention today. Say, come out of the spirit of defiance and come into the spirit of consecration. All right, all right. So they studied him, he liked women. So he fell in love with this woman named Delilah. 
And they knew that he fell in love with her. <laughs> See, you got to be careful about your feelings. Yeah. Because your feelings can cloud you and blind you to the oh, truth. Yes, yes, yes. Your feelings can make you do things against your good judgment and good will. <laughs> Because you're being led by your feelings. Yeah. Some of you mad right now because some feelings got you caught up with the wrong person. And now here you are holding the scars in the baggage. Uh, but guess what? God can heal that too. Uh. God is the God of a second chance, a third chance, a fourth. Oh, uh, don't say it. Act like you ain't made no bad decisions uh, about your dating situation. Uh. God is able. So let that right to so They went to Delilah. And they use the only other thing that's just as powerful as sex and power, and that is money. money. Tell somebody money. money. Say, we all gonna give you some good money, baby. Money. If you can find out what the secret of his strength is, we gonna pay you real good. She said, all right, I'm down for that. Ain't nobody scared of some money. I sure can use some money. <laughs> but here is Samson, nose wide open. All booed up with the yeah. Cuffing with the lot. Yeah. <laughs> she says, Oh Samson, oh Samson. Tell me the secret of your strength so that I can bound you up. Listen to what she said. Chapter 16. Listen to what she said. Tell me the secret of your strength so I can bound you up. You see what happens when you're led by your feelings? Uh -huh. You see what happens when you operate in defiance? It leads you into a situation that they're telling you, I'm here to destroy you. But you're so caught up in your feelings, uh, you don't got enough sense and strength to get up and go the opposite direction. All right. Who am I talking to in this place today? Caught up in a situation. Uh, with somebody, with something, in some place uh, that's designed to destroy you, but you right up in there, knows why open stuck like you don't know what to do. Uh, but I come to sound deliverance in this place today, uh, and God is about to snatch you out of the place uh, that's trying to destroy you. Uh, he's about to get your emotions in alignment. Uh, he's about to give you a mind regulation uh, so that he can bring you out of the place that you're in love with, but that's designed to destroy you. Amen. But what's even more crazy, baby? Uh -huh. She didn't try it one time. She tried it several times. And he was playing the fool. What can I do? Tie me up in seven wet reeds. <laughs> she go call it. Go get seven wet reeds, and they were rushing on. Ha, ah, that's a joke. <laughs> See, not only does the fight set up for sabotage, but it brings you into false confidence. Yeah. 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 You get cocky and arrogant. You think, I can't be caught. <laughs> it might happen to them, but it ain't going to happen to me. They might get caught. But I'm not going to get caught. Right. And the devil is laughing at you. Because right. he says, what makes you special when you're not even operating in what God has called you to operate in to be covered? All right. All right. See, now if you were consecrated, then that puts you in a position where you're different. But when you're defiant, you're no longer covered by the anointing that makes you different. Right. 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 When you caught up, you think life is a game. This ain't no game. This ain't no movie, man. This is no game. This is real life, spiritual warfare over the things of God and the things of the enemy. And you are crucial to how things flow. But you out here playing in the middle of a battle that you can't even see. Tell somebody, this ain't no movie, man. This ain't no game, man. <laughs> this is where the failure comes in. Yeah. It comes in in our inability to be led by purpose and not by passion. <laughs> not being led by consecration and being led by the thrill. The thrill of getting caught. The thrill of breaking the rules. Don't let the thrill get you set up to be destroyed. 
Because the cost of the fines is high. Because yeah. eventually the lava kept wearing on Samson and he told her his secret. It's in my hair. She got him to go to sleep. Cut his hair. And when he woke up, the enemies came on him and about to say he tried to shake his head with my head. <laughs> but it didn't help him. When he whipped it, it didn't do nothing. Before he was shaken, and here came the power. But the source of his strength was now cut off. And they bound him and they made him blind. And they put him in prison. He lost his power, he lost his freedom, and he lost his mobility. All because he thought that the fires was cool and that this was a game. Man. But I come to announce to you today that even though you might have lost your hair, yeah. Yeah. even though you might have lost your power, God has the power to grow your hair again. He has the power to give you back what you lost. He has the ability to restore you and to give you a second chance. And in chapter 16, verse 22, it says, How be it, the hair of his head began to grow, even after they shaved his head. Uh -huh. <laughs> even after they shaved his head, his hair began to grow again. Look at that. Even in the aftermath, immediately after the mistake, God automatically started to regrow. Oh, here we go. <laughs> what am I saying? God is so fitted to his purpose in your life that even when you mess up, he's already on the case to restore you. Oh, somebody should have shouted right there. Oh, you just messed up royally. Huh? Don't think you can bounce back, huh? but your hair already growing, baby. Huh? Messed up last night, but your hair already growing. Already growing. Come on, have a touch your hair say it's already growing. Baby. I messed up, but it's already growing. Follow huh? your mouth and praise him. Now how you get to grow back and we're going to go home. While he was in prison blind, he had to think some things over. First of all, the way you get stronger to come back the second time is you have to review own and learn from your mistakes. The problem is you keep getting by with grace so you think you can keep getting by. Mm -hmm. Sometimes God has to shut you down. Yeah. Sometimes God has to bring you down Amen. to get your attention, Amen. put you in a holding place yeah. so that he can make you look at yourself. Uh -huh. Samson can't blame nobody but himself. That's right. That's right. If this had not happened, he would have been blaming Delilah Blaming the Philistines, he would have found somebody to blame. Yeah. Yeah. But in this situation, it is obviously clear that Samson is the reason to be blamed for this situation. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes what you think is an embarrassment is a setup by God to restore you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 What seems like open shame is really God's way of trying to get your attention so that he can restore you to reposition you for a comeback. But in order to come back, you have to learn the mistakes. What is the root of my defiance? Why 